Joining us now is Pam Keith. Uh, she is running in Florida's 18th district. Uh, she is very progressive, but the Democratic Party uh, is not supporting her. <laughs> now, that might seem surprising to people who are not familiar with this topic, but unfortunately, uh, it is not at all surprising for progressives in this country who are paying attention. Uh, Pam, welcome to the show. Chang, thank you so much for having me. It's absolutely a pleasure to be here. Thank you. There's so many interesting parts of your race that I want to talk about. Uh, before we get to the actions of the DCCC uh, and what's interesting about your district and your run, uh, let's note for the record that you are Turkish. Um. Well, <laughs> <laughs> certainly I was born in Turkey and I was born in Ankara and lived in Istanbul for the first three years of my life. So yeah, I guess I could claim Turkish. Yeah, are you kidding me? Every Turkish American is gonna claim you as their own. So uh, I'm proud already. Uh, so, um, now, by the way, according to the John McCain rule, you can run for president. Now, I think that anybody, Absolutely. any citizen can run for president because of the 14th Amendment. That's my theory. But there's no questions because McCain ran and he was born on a military base in Panama and you were born on a base, the US military base in Turkey. So. Um, exactly. So tell us a little bit about your upbringing because I think it informs um, your point of view a little bit. Okay, well, I am the daughter of a US diplomat. That's how I ended up being born in Turkey. Uh, my father started out his uh, career as a naval officer and then went into the Foreign Service. His first duty station was in, I think, Saudi Arabia. My brother was born in Lebanon. I was born in Turkey. We lived in Morocco and Syria before my parents divorced and I moved to the States. So I have a global perspective. I also lived in Brazil with my family for a while. So I got to experience that culture as well. Um, I went to college. College and high school in California, a public high school, public college, went to law school in Boston at Boston College, and I followed my father's footsteps into the United States Navy. So my first job out of law school was as a Navy judge advocate like that television show JAG, that movie A Few Good Men. I defended sailors and Marines that got themselves into the trouble. And I did so both here in the United States and while I was deployed for two years overseas in the Middle East. So uh, let me get this right, let's review. You're JAG, which is super yeah. badass. Uh, <laughs> you are almost literally a young Turk. Uh, yes. <laughs> you are uh, the more progressive candidate in the race. And now, interesting fact, uh, by the end of 2017, you had already raised $575,000, that is amazing. So yeah. if, you know, if the world worked in the way that uh, people on TV think it works. Oh well, the Democratic Party is filled with progressives, and they support the more progressive candidate. Then you would have their support without a question. I mean, there's no reason right. not to support you at all. But apparently, that's not how it went down. So, what in the world yeah. happened in that district? Well, I'll tell you, um, this is one of those choices by the party that truly makes no sense. This isn't my first run for office, Cenk. Last cycle, I became the first African American woman ever to run a qualified campaign for United States Senate statewide in Florida. And I had basically no money. It was me and my car and a couple of dedicated people helping me out. I got 174,000 votes with no money. On the strength of my passion, my ability to engage people, my ideas, the strength of my advocacy. So I proved that I could turn out voters and I could engage and excite them. The district that I'm running in has a couple key components. It's not predominantly African American, but it has an African American population that has to turn out in extraordinary numbers in order for the district to be won by Democrats. It's simply no math otherwise. Uh, so you would think that an African American candidate might be a good idea. More importantly, the incumbent is an army veteran who lost both of his legs in Afghanistan. So for the first time, the Democrat is a veteran as well. Not only can I go toe to toe with Brian Nast on any claim of patriotism, any claim of sacrifice, but I also outrank him. And you'd think that that would come into play too. Uh, but at the end of the day, the party went with a candidate whose main claim to fame is the $250 million a year that a family, family's business brings in in revenue. I can't compete with that, I never could and I never will. But the people of Florida 18 are responding to a positive, progressive and passionate message. And that is why I'm not just competing, I'm leading this race. So Pam, it's impossible not to root for you, right? <laughs> if you're a real progressive and 
That story, I know I've now heard it in dozens of districts, but it is so disheartening every time. So here you have, and, and I understand the context perfectly, 174,000 votes in, the, in Florida with no money at all. No, is, no, no, no money at all. And, and remember back then when she, in 2016, there is no just Democrats, there is no our revolution. There's exactly. no almost no institutional progressive support, let alone democratic right. support. So that is, that is an amazing result. You've already raised $575,000 even without their help and mm -hmm. get small donors, etc. So exactly. And all the Democratic Party cares about is money, 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 right? And so all they, they've never not supported the richer candidate. Literally, <laughs> never, never. Is, and so then people wonder why we have a problem with the Democratic establishment. This is the problem. Right. Well, you know, I want to make an important point here, Chank, and that is that despite what the leadership in DC is doing, the Democrats here in Florida are responding to progressive messaging. They're responding to great candidates. They are excited and engaged. So I want to make sure that people understand the Democrats in my district are on fire. They are organized, they are activated, they are supporting organizations like Indivisibles, like Moms Demand, Never Again. The energy is absolutely there. So I want to make clear that I see the Democratic Party, not as the leaders in Washington who want to pick the players that are going to be on the team, but they are not the team owners. It's the people who are the team owners, and they have drafted me to represent them. And that's why I'm so excited about the direction of this campaign. No, no, no. Pam Keith is too strong, sorry. <laughs> okay, I I wouldn't want to be up against you, Pam. That's for sure. Um, okay, so now <laughs> you're you're also doing something innovative, which I love and I think is a great idea because I think it increases social media engagement, which I think is a really important metric for who's actually going to win. Uh, mm -hmm. It's something called Pam Chat. What is that? Yes, a Pam Chat is a, about a 20 minute discussion once a week where I take either a topic of the day, a, a policy idea, a proposal, and I do a deep dive. It's totally organic. It's just me and my iPhone. But the goal of the Pam Chat is to get beyond the surface. It's to educate people. It's to give them an idea about how I think, not just what I think, uh, because the the problem that people have is they feel like they're voting for people that stand for their values. Then when they actually get to Washington, they become lazy legislators that just kind of go with whatever the lobbyists give them. I am not a lazy kind of thinker. Um, I'm a I'm a much more organic, um, thoughtful kind of person. So I don't just want to talk about value propositions. Anybody can say I stand for justice and freedom and opportunity. Well, who doesn't? That's not saying anything, but if you really want an idea on how to handle gun reform, I will put a proposal and explain why that proposal can work. If you really want to tackle income inequality, I can explain to you as a 20 year labor attorney, what is going on with the National Labor Relations Board. I can explain to you what's going on in the boardroom and employers are making decisions about wages. And I can explain to you how we can actually make proposals and tax um, incentives to actually put money in people's pockets. That's not value proposition, that's solution. And that's why people are responding to my Pam chats. All right, uh, and uh, give us a sense of um, your state of volunteers and, mm -hmm. and uh, the energy that your campaign has. <laughs> It's beyond remarkable, Cenk. We have 450 activated volunteers. You can't go anywhere in our district without seeing Pam fans. We're canvassing all over the district. <laughs> we have people showing up <laughs> everywhere. I love it. I you know, I, I am a woman of faith. I, sh I go to churches of every stripe every weekend, not just to pander or to politic, but to, to be there in fellowship with people of a variety of different backgrounds. And the reason it doesn't come off as pandering is because it is authentic. Um, I, you know, I understand from which, from whence I get my strength and it animates everything that I do. Um, and, and so people can relate to that. There's truly no kind of person I can't relate to. Be it 
a veteran because of my veteran background, be it somebody who's come from a difficult economic situation. My parents divorced when I was young and my mom was on food stamps for a period. Be it somebody that uh, that is struggling to find work. I, I've been in that situation before. Yeah. I've had great chapters in my life, but I've also had real struggles. So I may have an, a BA, an MA, and a JD, but I also have a PhD in the struggle. And I'm willing to stand up for the people who've been through that. All right, love it. Uh, everybody, electpamkeith.com is the website. Uh, and then uh, if you're watching this later on YouTube or Facebook, uh, you could easily click on the links below in the description box to, to donate, uh, to fight against big money, and to volunteer and be a pamptivist. Is that what we call it? <laughs> yes, we can call it that. We call them Pam fans, but Pam to this works just as well. <laughs> All right, sounds good. All right, Pam Keith, uh, thank you so much for joining us at Rebel Headquarters. Really appreciate thank it. Thank you. Hey, I want to say this right. That's amazing. Okay, that's uh, t uh, Turkish for uh, thank you very much. Uh, and put a literal young Turk in Congress. Let's go do it. <laughs> <laughs>